Good morning everybody and welcome to my build video for version 2 of my button box project. So many of y'all wanted to see a full build of this second one so I had to oblige. Without further ado, here's the video. I started by drawing out where I wanted all of the buttons to go on a piece of 8 by 10 inch Lexan plastic. I found this at a hardware store for about 5 bucks. I used a table saw to cut down the plastic to the size that I needed, but I didn't video that last part. Using one of these stepped drill bits, I drilled out the holes to the sizes I had marked. Conceivably, this kind of drill bit could have been used to drill every hole, but if I had a drill bit that was the right size for a given part, I used that instead. There are a lot of holes on the board with a lot of different sizes. Once a hole was the right size, I used a piece of tape to cover it, indicating that I should leave that one alone. This helped me avoid mistakes. Once the holes were all the right size, I test fit all of the pieces inside, noting if any of the holes needed to be enlarged. It's helpful to have the holes just a tiny bit oversized, since the vinyl covering can interfere with the hole clearance. With the holes all the right size, I began to apply the vinyl texture to the surface. I started by cutting out a rectangle roughly the size of the plastic with about an inch of extra material on all sides. Next, I peeled the backing off of the vinyl and applied it to the front face of the plastic. Be double sure that you are applying it to the correct side. Make sure there are no air bubbles under the vinyl by pushing the material down and out with your fingers, starting from the center. Cut the corners off of the vinyl very close to the corner of the plastic. This will help us when folding the material back. Now fold the material all the way over to the other side, giving it a little stretch as you do so. Imagine that this is just really thick plastic wrap and you should be fine. Now hit the whole thing with a hairdryer or heat gun. This makes the material contract and pull tightly around the plastic. Using the already drilled holes as a guide, I carefully cut out the vinyl to allow the buttons to come through. Just go slow and use a nice sharp blade and a cutting board underneath. A clipboard will do in a pinch. Then I pushed all of the buttons through, hopefully for the last time. I was concerned about the stiffness of the plastic in the center of the board, so I added the ribs to stiffen the whole thing. Super glue works extremely well for this material, as long as the two surfaces being glued are very flat and coplanar. The ribs end about a quarter inch from the end of the plastic for clearance purposes. Now for the soldering. I went through and tinned all of the connections ahead of time. For the red buttons, I used a very low heat setting on my soldering iron since the high heat tended to melt the plastic that the connections were housed in. For the larger parts like the switch and key assembly, I used a high heat since they absorb a lot of heat. The next step was to connect a common ground to three groups of the buttons. The Teensy LC has three ground pins, so I grouped the controls into three groups, connecting a wire between one post of each of them, and then a final wire to the female end of a ribbon cable wire. Here's a simplified wiring diagram of how I did this. The encoders are a bit more complicated since each one requires five different wires to work. A ground, five volts, the button wire, and two signal wires for the encoder. I connected the ground connections to each other and likewise with the five volt connections. The ground wire then continued on to the rest of the controls in that group, and the five volt wire went to the five volt pin on the teensy. The LEDs on the switches also needed to be wired together and then to the 3.3 volt pin on the teensy. I should note that I used a teensy with male headers soldered to all the appropriate pins. You can buy the teensy with these headers already installed or just do it yourself, like I did. When all of the ground and power jumper wires have been soldered in place, I then soldered the leads that will connect to the pins on the teensy. Attach the buttons to the teensy, making sure to connect the ground and power as required, and one lead into each pin. Make sure you attach the signal wires for the encoders to a pin that supports interrupts. There are resources on the Arduino website that will help you with this. Now on to building the enclosure. This part is pretty optional. In fact, you could simply buy a pre-made enclosure and drill holes directly into it. It would cut out a lot of work, but I wanted to have the unique shape I ended up with. The total outside dimensions of the box should be the same as the overall dimensions of the faceplate. The front and back piece are the same width as the top and bottom edges of the front face, but the sides are the length of the sides of the front face minus the thickness of the material multiplied by two. This is important because you essentially want to be making a box that has the same outer dimensions as the face, except the front face of the box is much shorter to get that angled shape. 
Speaking of that angled shape, I had the sides cut at an angle that started at one corner and ended on the opposite edge the same distance up from the corner as the height of the front piece. I asked my dad to help me with this part because no matter how good you are at woodworking, your dad is always better at it. Then I glued it all together. I added some small rectangular pieces to the corner for strength and because I thought I needed the extra material in them for the screws, but it actually ended up causing more problems. So do this step at your own peril. The rubber bands help clamp those weird angles together. After this dried, I took it to a belt sander to get all the edges looking nice, and also making the angled section of it all one flat plane. This is important since the base must be flat for the whole thing to be stable when sitting on a flat surface. At this point, I realized I had made a mistake. I had originally planned the bottom piece to simply sit on the bottom, and screws would go up through it into the thin corner pieces I glued in earlier. But I realized that it just looked ugly, and the screws were going to have to be drilled in at a really weird angle, so I decided to do something different. I don't have a table saw at my house, so I had to hand saw the extra material off of the bottom piece so it would now fit inside the bottom of the box. I did you the favor of blurring out this footage so that you would see less of my mistake. I totally didn't mess up the autofocus settings on my camera. To fit the piece on the inside of the box, I now had to carve away at those thin pieces and angled the front edge of the bottom piece, but in the end it all worked out and the piece sat flat inside. Now it was time to add the screws to the side, and also time for mistake number two. I was drilling a blind hole into the edge of a very thin part. I drilled too close to the edge which was causing the material to split. To remedy this, I added a second piece above where the holes were going to be drilled to add material. After a quick gluing and clamping, I was back on the road. Now the drilling could be finished and the bottom piece connected to the body of the box. At this point, I added a hole in the back for the USB cable. Then the whole thing is ready for painting. After letting a few coats of paint dry, I added rubber feet to the bottom. After a quick test fit, I applied this glue to the inside of the faceplate and fixed it to the front of the box. Leaving the box able to be opened from the back allows repairs to be made without having to break or cut anything. In fact, I did have to re-solder a wire or two after putting the whole thing together, so it was already worth it to do it that way. Now the bottom can be screwed back on and the only thing left to do is test it out. But before we do that, I'll give you an opportunity to check out the video I did on the code. If you're not interested, feel free to skip it, but it's there as a reference if you need it. Now back to the test. Now that's what I call satisfying. I'm so thankful to y'all for watching this. As always, let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to help you out. If you make a box like this, I want to see it. I'll also share them all on my Twitter so that all five of my followers can appreciate your work. But most importantly, I'll appreciate it, because I appreciate you. Bye!